It was a pretty disappointing first half for the Yankees. I know as a fan, I was expecting a lot more. And then you finish off with a chance to sweep Houston. And you have one of the worst, if not the worst, loss of the year. I think we all needed this all-star break. But it's time to get back to baseball. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. of weeks left until the trade deadline and we're starting to see a lot more names thrown out there as potential trade targets the one name that we've seen more this week than in previous weeks is Joey Gallo there was a report from Joel Sherman one of the most seasoned Yankees writers that the Yankees were considering Gallo but so are the San Diego Padres now Joey Gallo is better defensively than you would think he's got eight defensive runs saved He's got one of the best arms in baseball. And, of course, he's got one of the most powerful left-handed bats in baseball. So I think he would fit in nicely in left field. But one thing that concerns me is that he's another swing and miss guy. He's not going to help you a lot of times in advancing runners. He will help balance out the lineup in terms of righty-lefty. But he's not the type of contact guy that I think the Yankees need. Same thing with Jock Peterson. Jock Peterson is batting 230. He's got 11 home runs for the Cubs. He's a guy that's been considered by Yankees fans as a target. I actually haven't seen any reports come from legitimate baseball writers that consider Jock Peterson a possibility. I still think the Yankees need to consider one of the guys out of Pittsburgh. There's Brian Reynolds. He is absolutely tearing it up this year. He's batting 302 with 16 home runs and 51 ribbies. He's got a 906 OPS. That's higher than Aaron Judge. There's also Adam Frazier. He's a second baseman with the Pirates. He's batting 330 with four home runs and 29 ribbies. He's not a power guy, but he's got 26 doubles, something the Yankees are sorely lacking. He's got a 137 OPS plus at this point, an 860 OPS. So these are all guys who could definitely help the Yankees. I could also see Brian Cashman going for Ben Gamble, former Yankee prospect. He was traded several years back. But he's with Pittsburgh. He's playing well. He's got a 779 OPS, a 112 OPS plus. He's a left-handed hitter. He knows the Yankees organization. And he's not going to be as expensive as some of those other guys. And we know that Brian Cashman likes to get a bargain rather than overpay. So maybe Ben Gamble, somebody that the Yankees could take a look at. One other name that I've seen out there recently is Chris Bryant with the Cubs. Now, I just don't think this is a possibility. I don't think it would be a smart move. He's a right-handed power hitter. He plays third base. You already have a third baseman who's doing a great job in Gio Urshela. What message would that be sending to him? And yeah, Chris Bryant's a good defensive player these days. But honestly, the Yankees just don't need him. They need to focus on getting left-handed bats. Andrew Benintendi is somebody that the Yankees could consider. He's playing left field for the Kansas City Royals. He's the former left fielder for the Boston Red Sox. And remember, he used to rake every time that he would come to Yankee Stadium. His swing is basically built for Yankee Stadium. I think he would do a phenomenal job. He's got a 107 OPS+, plus, which doesn't blow you away. It's slightly above league average. But I think that would go up significantly if you put him in the Yankees order and hit him between Aaron Judge and John Carlos Stanton. Max Kepler is another name that we've seen thrown around. He's not going to just overwhelm you with his batting average. He's hitting 222, but he does have 10 home runs, and he's got a 715 OPS, which is higher than Andrew Benintendi. But again, I think we need to focus on getting more contact skills. I like Benintendi. I like Brian Reynolds. Those type of players, it's going to take a little bit more to get those guys. But at this point, if you're really going for it, I think it's worth it. Ketel Marte is a name that I've thrown around out there. Other people have thrown that around earlier in the year. It doesn't sound like Arizona is interested in moving him, and he's also had some hamstring and calf injuries this year. So in my opinion, you got to stay away from a guy who's injured right now. The Yankees seem to be buyers. They're eight games back. I think they need to focus first on being winners over the next, you know, 10 days or so. If you can cut that gap in half or close to it, you know, get within striking distance, then I think you need to make a move. But if the Yankees come out and drop four in a row, five in a row, and just continue to stink, then I think it's time to maybe see what pieces you could unload rather than add to the squad. I think it's interesting that the Yankees have not set their rotation yet for this Boston series. 
I think they're going to probably try and give an extra bit of rest to Garrett Cole because he really, really went above and beyond the call of duty in his final start against Houston last weekend. Domingo Herman is another guy who I think could use a little bit more rest. Would not surprise me if the Yankees begin the second half with Nestor Cortez Jr. as their game one starter. And then you probably follow him up with Jordan Montgomery and then maybe Jamison Tyone, Garrett Cole, and then Domingo Herman. Now, I could be way out of left field. The Yankees might want to get Garrett Cole another start right away. But to me, I think you need to give him a little bit of extra rest to avoid any issues kind of like Corey Kluber has had after his no-hitter or other pitchers have had after exerting themselves. I think you really need to be careful with your $324 million man. So you guys have spoken. This is a really important time for the Yankees, and you guys want those post-game live reactions. So I'm going to go back to post-game live reactions for the next few weeks at least and see how the Yankees are doing. And if they somehow can stay in this race, we can stick with them. But right now, I think you guys are craving those post-game live reactions. So I got my internet stabilized. I've got a wired connection right now. There'll be no more instability. I can run at 1080p and have it look nice. So after each game of this upcoming series, I'll be doing a post-game live reaction. Also, planning a watch party for Sunday night baseball. So tune in for that one. The Olympics are back, and it's time to award the gold medal for male grooming products manscaped their fourth generation performance package includes the brand new lawnmower 4.0 talk about a world-class dismount into a post-quarantine world the world is now open for business and the performance package 4.0 from manscaped is here to help get you ready inside you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer crop preserver ball deodorant crop reviver toner plus two free gifts performance boxer briefs and the shed travel bag get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code nyy recaps that's all one word at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping with the code nyy recaps at manscaped.com your balls will feel like they won the gold so help yourself help my sponsor help the show go to manscaped.com use the code nyy recaps